Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm with Frost Incorporated. Today we're going to show you the setup and the installation of a 25 gallon ATV sprayer and everything that you need to know to go with it. So after unboxing your sprayer, you will find three main components. You'll find the sprayer and tank. This has the boomless bar and our T-post. You'll also find three spray tips hose wand, and power accessories. The first step in mounting the sprayer to your four-wheeler is determining what power source you'd like to use. So in ordering your sprayer, please specify if you would like the traditional alligator style clips that will connect to, directly to your battery, or a 12-volt cigarette lighter style. If going with the alligator clip style, we will need to install these to the battery before putting the sprayer onto the four-wheeler. On today's installation, we're going to show it using the 12 volt cigarette lighter. The well, first thing you're going to want to do is grab the sprayer tank and frame. Sprayer tank and frame will fit on the back side of the four wheeler. We're going to pull. As you can see, we do have a rack here. It will not interfere with any of our installation. After you have the sprayer mount sitting where you'd like it. We're going to go ahead and fasten it down. And we're today we're just using regular ratchet straps for easy on, easy off mobility. Now, one question we get a lot is, are we going to crush the tanks? The answer to that is no. You can tighten these down. You can stand on the tank. We are not going to crush our tanks. As you can see, the tank is firmly in place and will not be going anywhere. If you have a different style four wheeler with the tube rack, you can strap directly to that frame. You can also U bolt it down. It is up to user's discretion. The next step that we're going to look for is our T-post. You'll have two T-posts inside. Simply slide them in to both sides, just like so. From here, we'll grab our spray bar. And you can see that we have U-bolts both sides. These will slide right over the top of our T-post. Just like so. Now what our T-posts allow us to do is slide our bar in and out. I am not a fan of getting chemistry on my machines so I hold my bars out just a little bit away from the machine. The only two tools that you will need for this whole installation is a three quarter inch wrench and a half inch wrench. After you set your desired location of your T-post and spray bar, take the three quarter inch wrench and tighten up this, the jam nuts to hold your T-post in place. Now we're going to tighten up our spray bar to our T-post, which will take a half inch wrench preferably a box end, you will need to tighten your U-bolts up evenly. After you have tightened up your T-posts and your spray bar, next we'll go ahead and hook up the spray bar. So before we go ahead and hook any plumbing up, Let's go over what you see on top of the sprayer here. First off, we come out of the tank up. This is going to be our inline filter. Inline filter then goes into your pump. We're using Remco pumps. It's a fully serviceable pump. From the pump, we go to our pressure regulator. We have a gauge that lets you indicate what your current spray pressure is. And our pumps put out more volume than what the spray bars do, so we have a bypass line back to tank as well. 
ball valve allows you to choose between the spray bar or the spray wand that we'll be hooking up later. So we're going to go ahead and hook our spray bar up to the, the back side of the ball valve. This is just a fly nut fitting. There's no O-rings. There's nothing to, to lose or to screw up setting up. Just twist on until it stops. And the spray bar is hooked up. So now it's time to hook up the hose wand. The hose wand comes with 20 feet of hose and will connect to the back side of the ball valve. Come through and screw it on. Now you're going to find your three tips that came with the kit. We have your two outer tips, which enable us to get the 30 feet of coverage. Then we have our center tip, which will provide coverage between the two outside tips. All tips are quarter turn on, quarter turn off. The strainer will help you maintain a consistent pattern. When installing, make sure the strainer is in place. You'll then Stick your nozzle on and give it one quarter of a turn. The nozzle is now properly secured. The XT tips, which are our N2 tips, have the ability to rotate. We can turn the nozzles. You may have to make the adjustment to make sure they're spraying in the proper direction. First, put your tip on, give it a quarter turn to the all, all the way position, and just see where your tip lines up. So give it a quarter turn back, and this one I'm about 180 degrees off, so we're going to turn it 180 degrees and lock it back in. It may take a couple time, but once it's set it will stay in place. Now that the sprayer is all put together, you have your tips on. A lot of people ask which ends the tip. What you see on the right is a check valve. The check valve allows you to spin the green nozzle to the right. It will engage the check to where we will shut off the left side or the right side. In order to open them, we'll spin it to our left and it will allow the check valve to open back up. All three nozzles have a check valve. They automatically snap shut at anything under 8 psi. 8 psi and under, it will not spray, will not dribble, we are not wanting to streak up your yard or any spot while driving to and from your spray site. After we're all put together, the last step is to hook up our power cord. On the back side of the motor, or the pump, you're going to see a whip that comes off with the male and female end corresponding to red and black. On the switch side, we have male and female ends. We just need to make sure that we Line up the red and black, male and female, with the correct ends on the pump. And then we're going to plug the other end in to our 12 volt cigarette lighter style. And I'll go ahead and plug it into the machine. Now after we hook up the power, I'm going to just show you how the check valves allow us to turn water both sides off. We'll turn the pump on. And we're going to start spraying. Now if we want to shut the left side off, we'll just turn the check valve on the left side to the right and we'll shut that side off. If we just want to spray with the center, say you're going down a trailer up along those lines. We will just turn the driver's side off. That will allow just the center one to spray. Also the end nozzles are 360 degree ro rotatable. So if you need to spray a smaller area like a, maybe a driveway, we can turn them both down and choke up the spray pattern. Or if you have some taller vegetation like buckthorn or western red cedar that you'd like to spray top to bottom, we can turn them up. 
and spray them top to bottom. So after you have the sprayer all installed, you have power hooked on, the last thing to do before you go out and spray is to adjust the pressure for your nozzles. In order to do that, first we got to turn the sprayer on, and then we'll take the red pressure regulator nozzle, we'll turn it all the way to the left, we'll be to zero it out, put it to pretty much the lowest pressure that it'll run to, which is right about 9 psi. And then we'll turn it to the right to set the desired psi, but this spray tips are targets is 28 psi, which is right about there. The numbers on the pressure regulator mean nothing for our application with this sprayer. Don't use those as a guide. Always watch your pressure gauge. Um, and if you decide to shut off one side, you will notice that your pressure is going to spike. We're going to go ahead and turn it to the left and bring it back down to the 28. Same with if we shut both sides off, you're going to have to regulate it back down to 28. The tips are designed to work at a specific pressure for a specific gallons per acre that you want to put down. For any spray application, it's a good idea to go ahead and check your filter for debris. To do so, we'll just unscrew the cap. take out our filter. Our filters will plug from the inside out. In order to wash out the filter, just rinse under faucet water, anything like that's just fine. Then you'll go ahead, you'll put it back in. One major thing to remember, inside the cap there is an O-ring. We need to have the O-ring in place in order for us not to be sucking air. After you make sure the O-ring is in place, we'll screw the cap back on. Make sure we're nice and tight. Turn the pump on quick. It will take just a moment to build up pressure. If when you do do this and you are not building up any pressure at all, and you see that there is an air bubble, could be matter simple as cycling pressure regular down to zero back up to your desire or you're missing your o-ring you're gonna have to check your o-ring as well after that's done you can go out and spray thank you